This revision video is a general introduction to the chemistry concept of equilibrium, looking at how we can shift the position of equilibrium by altering the reaction conditions. Most chemical reactions can be represented by symbol equations such as this one. This equation tells me that the reactants A and B react together to form two products, C and D. But some reactants have a different arrow in the centre, and this symbol shows me that this is a reversible reaction. This means that C and D can react together to turn back into A and B. When we're observing a chemical reaction that is a reversible reaction, if that reaction takes place in a closed system, in other words, no matter and no energy are added to the reaction or taken away, then it's possible for the reaction to reach a stage that we call equilibrium. Now, it's kind of unfortunate that you usually meet equilibrium in biology before chemistry. And in biology, we tend to be talking about diffusion. And diffusion is one very, very specific example of equilibrium, where at the point of equilibrium, the um, concentrations on both sides are going to be the same as each other. But this is actually incredibly unusual. So when we think about equilibrium in chemistry, we're looking for the point where the forward reaction, where A and B turn into C and D, and the reverse reaction, where C and D turn into A and B, are occurring at the same rate or the same speed. And when that happens, we're going to reach a point where the concentration of the reactants and the products stops changing. So you can see on my graph here that the concentration of A and B is going to decrease as they turn into C and D, and the concentration of C and D is going to increase as they get made from A and B. And then eventually, when those two reactions are happening at the same rate, the concentrations will stop changing and we say we've reached equilibrium. But that doesn't have to mean that all the concentrations are the same as each other. It just means that they have stopped changing. We can describe the amount of product being made by different reversible reactions by talking about left and right. So if you imagine a chemical equation, we have the reactants on the left reacting to form the products on the right. So if you have an equilibrium like this first example, which makes a lot of product and doesn't leave very much reactant over, then we would say that the equilibrium sits far to the right. Whereas if we look at this second equilibrium, which doesn't make nearly as much product and still leaves lots of reactant left over, we would say that this equilibrium is sitting on the left. Now, as scientists or as engineers trying to make a chemical or make a product, we would much rather have the equilibrium far to the right because this means that the reaction has a higher yield. It's going to make more product, and that means it's going to make us more money. So the whole next section of equilibrium is about how can we force the equilibrium to move to the right and therefore increase our yield. In order to move the position of equilibrium and therefore increase the amount of product that's being made, we can alter the reaction conditions. So this could mean changing the temperature or changing the pressure. In order to explain this, we're going to use something called Le Chatelier's principle. This tells me that if I have a closed system, which has already reached equilibrium, and then I try to change something, so it's not a closed system anymore, because I've maybe added some energy, or I've taken away a product, or I've just messed with it somehow, the system will shift and the equilibrium will move in order to try to undo whatever it is that I've done. This sounds complicated, but basically it means whatever I try and do, the reaction's going to try and undo it. And all of my answers to equilibrium questions are going to have four parts to them. Firstly, I'm going to state the Chatelier's principle. Then I'm going to consider which reaction is favoured, which means which one is going faster. So either the forward reaction goes faster or the reverse reaction goes faster. Based on that, I'm going to say which side equilibrium moves to. And finally, I'm going to say what the observable change is. So what would I see? So this might be, I'm going to make more of a certain product, or it might be, so therefore there's a color change. The first thing I need to do is remind the examiner what Le Chatelier's principle says. So whatever I've done, the system will shift to counteract the change. That's always going to be my first line. The next step is to think about which reaction is favored. This means that one of my two reactions is going to start going faster, and it will be whichever one is going to undo what I just did. 
So in the forward reaction, A and B turn into C, and in the reverse reaction, C turns into A and B. If I've added a lot of chemical A, the system is going to try and get rid of it, and the only way it can get rid of it is by turning it into C. So that's the forward reaction. The forward reaction is going to be favoured. Now we need to think about the position of equilibrium. Am I going to move it right by making more product, or am I going to move it left by making more reactant? Well, when the forward reaction is favoured, that is always going to move the equilibrium to the right. We're making more C, and C is on the right-hand side of the equation. Finally, what is it that I'm going to see? What is the observable change? Well, the blue A is going to be used up, and I'm going to make the pink C instead. So the solution is going to turn pink. In the second scenario, I want to know what will happen if we increase the pressure. In order to understand this, let's just think about pressure in general. Pressure is caused by particles of a gas colliding with the walls of a container that they're in, and it's directly proportional to the number of particles there are. If there are twice as many particles and every single other thing is exactly the same, the pressure will be twice as high. So if I think about the equation that I had, on the left hand side I have A and B. I have two different particles, but on the right hand side I only had C. I only have one particle. So the left hand side of the equation represents a higher pressure scenario. Again, we're going to go through our four steps. Firstly, state Le Chatelier's principle. The system is going to shift to counteract the change that I have made. Next, we need to think about which reaction is favoured. With the previous example, we could say that every single time we add a reactant, it will favour the forward reaction. But here, we need to look at this specific reaction and the number of moles of gas on each side. So here, we've got A and B on the left, but only C on the right. So the left-hand side is my high-pressure side, and my right-hand side is my low-pressure side. So if I increase the pressure, the system is going to try to reduce the pressure by getting rid of some of those moles of gas. And the only way we can get rid of them is by reacting them together to turn them into C. So again, my forward reaction is going to be favoured. And again, that means that the equilibrium will shift to the right. And so again, it will turn pink. Now, it's important to emphasise at this point that this isn't the same thing as talking about the rate of reaction. You've learned elsewhere in Unit 6 that as you increase the pressure, you're going to increase the rate of reaction because the particles are going to collide more frequently. And that's still true here. So that means that as we increase the pressure, the forward reaction, which is being favoured, will speed up. But so will the reverse reaction, because all reactions are going to speed up when you increase the pressure. The thing is that the forward reaction is going to speed up by a larger degree than the reverse reaction. So overall, it's going to have more benefit. This is quite a tricky concept, so it's worth checking that you have got your head around it OK. So pause the video and write down what you think will happen to the position of equilibrium for each of the three reactions if we decrease the pressure. As we know, Le Chatelier's principle tells us that whatever we do to the equilibrium, it will shift to try to counteract that change. So if we decrease the pressure, the equilibrium will move to increase the pressure again. So if we look at this first reaction, we can see that there are four moles of gas on the left, and that's the high pressure side, whereas there are only two moles of gas on the right. So if we decrease the pressure, it's going to be the backward reaction that is favoured and the equilibrium is going to move left. In the second example, we have pentane being combusted. There are nine moles of gas on the left-hand side of the equation, but 11 on the right-hand side. So it's that right-hand side that's the high-pressure side, and the equilibrium will move right. In this final example where methane is combusted, there are three moles of gas on both sides of the equation. So decreasing the pressure will have no impact on the position of equilibrium. Finally, we need to look at what happens if we alter the temperature. In order to answer this, you'll be told that either the forward or the reverse reaction is either exo or endothermic. In this example, we're going to say that the forward reaction is exothermic. So we can say with certainty that the reverse reaction must be endothermic, because in every reversible reaction, you will have one exothermic side and one endothermic side, because it's the same bonds being broken and made, they're just happening the other way around. 
So having said this, we can look at what's going to happen if we increase the temperature. As always, we're going to start out by stating Le Chatelier's principle. The system is going to shift in order to counteract the change. Next, we need to think which reaction is going to be favoured. If we increase the temperature, Le Chatelier's principle tells us that the system is going to try to decrease the temperature. So it's the endothermic reaction that will be favoured because it will absorb energy from the surroundings. So in this instance, the backward reaction or the reverse reaction is going to be favoured. And so the equilibrium will shift to the left and therefore we're going to see this solution turn blue. Finally, let's ask ourselves what will happen to the position of equilibrium if a catalyst is added. Pause the video and write down what you think. Well, if we add a catalyst to a reversible reaction, actually there is no impact on the position of equilibrium. As you know, a catalyst is a chemical that speeds up the rate of reaction, but it will speed up both the forward and the reverse reactions. So overall, there is no impact on the position of equilibrium. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found that a useful introduction to the equilibrium topic. Don't forget to like and subscribe below for more chemistry videos coming soon.